Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show, a Baxter Professional Services production. Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show, where we're experts in nursing, experts in business. I'm Tina Baxter, your host. The Nurse Shark Academy Show highlights nurse business owners and others in the healthcare field who promote entrepreneurship. We interview nurse leaders and encourage them to tell their story. My mission is for you to own your seat at the table of nurse entrepreneurship, gaining confidence, skills, and freedom to live your life on your own terms. You will dream big and expand your consciousness as an entrepreneur. Join us and support these wonderful nurse entrepreneurs and leaders. Today's episode is with Susan Cacciola, how one nurse who after a divorce discovered the joy of entrepreneurship as a legal nurse consultant. And hello, welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy show. I'm Tina Baxter and I'm your host. The Nurse Shark Academy show highlights nurse business owners and others in the healthcare field who promote entrepreneurship. We interview nurse leaders and encourage them to tell their story. Today's guest is Susan Cacciola. Susan is a legal nurse consultant. She's worked in multiple specialties throughout the years. She's also taught uh, CNAs and home health aides. She works um, in a variety of different ways. So welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you. It's great to be here. And so tell us a little bit more um, about yourself. And the first question we always like to know is what made you become a nurse? How did you get into the nursing field? Well, as far back as I can remember from childhood, I was always helping my friends. And um, as I got older, uh, I became uh, a candy striper. I don't know how many people remember that. I don't think they have that anymore. But, you know, you brought water pitchers to people. And then um, I just wanted to go into the healthcare field. And so uh, I applied to nursing school. And, and I started working before I got into nursing school the summer before uh, at a hospital and as a unit secretary, just so I can make sure I got a little exposure. And from there, it just continued into this great career. That's wonderful. So you started out as a volunteer yes, in the hospital and got introduced to nursing. So where did you go to school? What was your nursing school? I went to Syracuse University and I got my BSN. It was a great undergraduate edu- education. Okay. And so uh, just, just for our listeners, can you tell me a little bit about your program where you were there, because I'm always fascinated how each program is a little bit different, but there's such a foundational uh, thing with it. So when you got into nursing school, because I've talked to diploma nurses, I've talked to nurses with certificates and all these other things. Mm -hmm. So what was it like uh, when you were going to school as a BSN student? What was it like on your campus? Wow, you're really digging up memories. That was 43 years ago. We still wore nursing caps uh, in clinicals. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, we actually, when I started practicing, we were still wearing our nursing caps. Um, oncology nursing was developing a little bit more then. We had the opportunity to specialize a little bit. So I actually focused on that. And when I graduated and started at uh, a at the hospital that I was working at, I was one of the participants that developed their first oncology um, book for nurses. So it it was, um, I think it was a really great undergrad experience. They they really gave you a diversified background. And then of course, you know, once you graduate, uh, wherever you start, then you really get your education in nursing to specialize. Definitely. So did you start off in oncology when you graduated? No, actually, I didn't. Uh, That was one of my volunteer roles when I was practicing as a new grad and uh, early in my nursing career. I actually was, um, can we say where we started and practiced? (laughs) So I started at um, what's now Meridian Health was Hackensack uh, Medical Center in Hackensack, New Jersey. And I was one of the, the first new grads in their medical ICU CCU. Wow. Um, and then from there, I went to cardiac cath. And and, uh, and then I left. And then, you know, it's just a, a long journey after that. Okay. 
And so in your nursing career, because you have such an impressive bio, uh, you've had backgrounds in acute case management, critical care and home care and dialysis, long-term care, medical practice management, so many different things that you've done. Um, what was your favorite part? What was your favorite part of nursing? I think um, education has always been my favorite. Um, when I was in school, uh, I thought I would complete my master's. I actually started it, but then life came along and made twists and turns. Um, so I've always enjoyed teaching. Okay. All right. And, and um, I saw here that you also trained CNAs. Did you have your own school or did you? Well, uh, at the present time, uh, I was asked about two years ago to develop a class to train CNAs and home health aides to become um, certified medication assistants. So I developed the class uh, for this business, and I'm the administrator as well as the educator. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Oh, give me one second, please. Nurses, are you tired, frustrated, and burnt out? Are you tired of being called a hero, but feeling like a zero? Are you ready to break free? I'm inviting you to feel the sun, find the joy and passion in your nursing career. Register for the Kickstart 2024 challenge with the Nurse Shark Academy. Come and feel the sun. All right. And so uh, as we were talking earlier, you mentioned that one of your uh, favorite is education. What is it about education that you enjoy so much? Well, it's kind of funny because uh, um, it helps me to learn better. It helps me to practice better. If I can understand it and then give that to someone else and help them make the connection to me, it not only gives them that benefit, but it gives me the benefit of really understanding what's going on. That sounds great. And so um, how long did you work in the hospital before you transitioned to, to education? Um, well, that's so oh, how I did. When I first came out, I was there maybe five, five or six years. And then I left for a long time and did a bunch of other things. And then one day I got a call and they were like, I, we need you to be a, an ER case manager. And I never thought I'd work in an ER. And then there I was, ER case manager, again, back at Hackensack, a great place to work. And uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Okay. And so from there, uh, because it looks like you've gone into entrepreneurship, what made you decide that you wanted to go that route? Well, I was happily running my uh, ex's medical practice and then we got divorced and I was like, hmm, what should I do? You know, it gave me like a, a new beginning. So I was exploring, should I finish my master's? Should I go to law school? Should I get my MBA? And then I just discovered legal nurse consulting. I had, I had children, you know, one in college and two uh, uh, not close, you know, very close behind. And I discovered the legal nurse consulting, and it was like nursing CSI. And I thought this looks really interesting. Uh, and I explored it, and then I decided to to learn about how to do it, and and that's where I started my entrepreneurship. Awesome. So uh, as a legal nurse consultant, um, what is it your, what's your typical day like? So for those of you who are listening, have never uh, experienced being a legal nurse consultant, I kind of want you to get a day in the life of an LNC. Oh. Well, let me give you a little history because I thought, uh, so as a legal nurse consultant, you can, you know, do a lot, a lot of different things. One is you can work in a law uh, office or you can work as an independent contractor and work behind the scenes. And that's what I thought I was going to do. Um, and then one day I was exhibiting at a, a trial lawyer seminar and, and an attorney approached me and he said, I need a nurse with ICU experience. And, you know, I, and he said he needed an expert. And so it just took off from there. I agreed and he kind of mentored me. And 
And then, you know, it just took off. And so I would say the majority of the work that I do now is expert work in nursing malpractice cases. Okay. All right. And, and I'm pretty sure um, nursing home malpractice cases, there's a lot of work to be done. The nursing home and I, and I specialize in wound care as, it, care as well. And so, yes, it's, and that and the nutrition are also huge, huge factors in across the healthcare system, basically, no matter, not just nursing home, you know, acute care, no matter where you turn, it's nutrition. Yeah. People forget that uh, food is medicine. Yes. And if you're feeding your body junk all the time, junk is what you're going to get in your body. It's really as simple as that. That's true. You know, one of the, I know there's a lot of other factors, but one of the things I teach, especially when I'm teaching nurses or um, attorneys or even, you know, paraprofessionals, I think, you know, you got to think of the big four, I call it. Eat, drink, sleep, and move. And if they don't do that, they deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Having uh, worked in the long-term care industry, I can tell you the ones that are going to live longer and the yep. ones that are going to have a, an early morbidity and the ones that don't move, they don't do anything. I've had 40-year-olds in a nursing home uh, that were in worse shape than some of my 90-year-olds because yes. they don't move. Yeah. Yep. It's, it was interesting today. I was um, looking... Uh, to put things into a, a seminar presentation and I came upon uh, Nightingale's notes, you know, and way back then she was talking about nutrition and the importance of the nurse making sure that the patient ate and drank. But we often for forget that. And I can tell you the, my own father was in a uh, long-term care. He was in a nursing home for rehab. And if we didn't go in there to feed him, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he actually got food because I'd go in there and it'd be on his plate and nobody even bothered to encourage yes. them to eat. And, you know, with someone with dementia, you need to encourage them to eat sometimes. Yes, absolutely. And, and more than three meals a day in those cases. Yes, yes, yes. And so um, how long have you been a legal nurse consultant? Um, it's about 17 years now. Oh, wow. So you've, you've been, been around doing it for quite a while. So if you had advice for any nurse that's thinking of starting her own business or his own business, what would you give them? One of the things I teach is that you can become anything you want to at any age. I was 48. I stepped out of, you know, what I thought I would be in for a very long time after my divorce and was able to, you know, explore. It was a great time in my life. You explore, and, and I tell people, keep your, your CV and your or your resume updated and throw it out there and see what bites and see what people are looking for and think that you can do because sometimes it gives you other ideas and, and then you find something that you might absolutely love. Exactly. That's, a, that's great advice you know, keep your options open and be willing to try something different, new. So um, as a business owner, how, how, what was the biggest challenge that you had starting your own business? Well, you know, nurses aren't trained to be business people. And we certainly aren't trained about, you know, staying on top of billing and marketing and all those things that you have to learn. And then you have to learn all the things about computers and look, even the stuff we're doing here today. You know, you you never get away from technology. So it, it gives you a chance to expand your brain and your knowledge. And it also stresses your brain and your knowledge to expand at the same time. <laughs> It can be a challenge, uh, technology. <laughs> we certainly had to get a little bit more used to it since the pandemic. I think it was a wonderful opportunity in many ways people to do other things and look at how we're doing, you know, visits, um, it, like behavioral health is now online. So a lot yeah. of it, it's very interesting. I, I think, I do think that wound care and some telehealth nursing is difficult to do with a little camera talking to the patient. Um, 
but I do think it does have its benefits. It certainly is helpful that you can reach more people. And I think in the educational space, um, as a nurse teaching someone about their condition, I think having that option for people who have mobility issues or uh, transportation issues um, is very helpful. Yes. So you have an offer for our clients. And so we didn't get a chance to talk about this, but I wanted to talk a little bit about your integrative nurse life coaching. Tell me about that. Um, so I started a holistic nursing background years ago. Um, my ex uh, practiced uh, both in, uh, internal medicine and integrative uh, medicine. And I, I fell in love with it. And for a very long time, I was always interested in nutrition and trying to maximize our health and wellness and, you know, eating properly. And like you said, not eating the junk food. And so over the years, I just kept feeding myself different classes and looking at other um, professionals, MDs and nurses who, who were expanding their space, professional space and incorporating Eastern and Western medicine and nursing, you know, and bringing some of that, that knowledge from the indigenous practices forward into modern society and applying them. You know, like there's a reason why all why we're here today. We all come from indigenous practices, some there, some far distance in the past. And if it wasn't for them and what they did, we wouldn't be here. That's certainly true. If you look at the history of medicine as a whole, we've come a long way, but I often think we have a long way to go. Um, one of my favorite shows is Star Trek. And I remember watching one of the movies and uh, they go back in time to the 80s, right? <laughs> and so Dr. Uh, McCoy walks in there and he sees this lady and it's always stuck in my head, right? It's always stuck in my head. She's, she sees this lady. He asks, what's wrong with you? And she says, I got kidney kidney disease and kidney dialysis. And he's like, oh my goodness, we're you know back in the, in the barbarian times. He said, take this pill and, and, and call me tomorrow. And so she takes this pill, right? And then she comes out and she's like, the doctor gave me a pill and I grew a new kidney. The doctor gave me a pill and I grew a new kidney. And I laugh at that every time I see it, but it also gives me hope. I'm like, this is something we can aspire to that with technology, maybe one day we will be able to grow organs for people for transplant that we don't have to worry about rejection or anything like that, because maybe we could take their cellular structure and do it for them. I don't know. It's just, I always look at, you know, where we could possibly be in the next 20, 30 years. I mean, new technology is coming out every day. Um, I wish we could find something to help people not fall. <laughs> and our elders not fall in the nursing home or fall in the hospital. That'd be great if we can keep, you know, keep people safe. Um, and so this is a great way for nurses to be a part of that innovation as well. Well, the great thing about it is uh, it's, it's nurse life coaching combined with the holistic. And there's 42, approximately 42 uh, integrative practices that you can become knowledgeable about. For instance, uh, mindfulness, meditation, Reiki, and aromatherapy, other, I mean, like I can go on for a, a while. But basically, uh, the insurance companies are starting to perk their ears up because for years, you know that we keep telling patients what they should do. Across the healthcare spectrum, you need to lose weight. You need to stop smoking. You need to stop being so stressed. And we know also that the only way that we get the patient to do that is when they have buy-in and confidence. And so the beauty of integrative nurse life coaching is that it's uh, client-centered and client-driven. And so if it, it, it moves them into that position to discover their strengths and then make their own plan. And then I guide them and I give them tools for their toolbox because we all need tools for our toolbox. And we've all gone through some kind of trauma in our life of some degree. And so learning how to manage stress and to deal with new situations 
it's, it's a beautiful thing. And they have found that if the confidence level and the motivation is a seven or above, that the success level is very high. So it's a great opportunity to, you know, bring East and West together and help people achieve any goals, whether it's career or um, relationship or medical related or behavioral health related. It helps them. It doesn't take the place of, of uh, traditional Western nursing and medicine. It, it works with them. And I think that's important because a lot of people have the either or mentality. Either you do all non-traditional or alternative or complementary medicine, or you do all Western traditional medicine. And I don't think it has to be that way. You can integrate them both and, and use them both. Absolutely. I mean, a perfect example is just, you know, how many people we all, I think all of us at some point in our life experience a little anxiety, you know, like just before I came on, I was a little anxious, you know, so you, you just do some breathing techniques and it, it changes your, your approach. Or there's, you know, there's things like brain spotting and EMDR. It's like using more modern techniques to help the brain to dissociate the trauma and to get you out of sympathetic and back into parasympathetic so that you can function. Yes. Yes. So um, as we get ready to wrap up, um, if, if, if a nurse wanted to get a hold of you, how would they contact you or anyone if they wanted to contact you for a session? How would they get a hold of you? So they can email me. They can email me at nurse, N-U-R-S-E, and my last name, Cacciola. C A C C I O L A at gmail.com. And um, I can give them my cell phone number is 201 694 7927. Great. And I understand you do have a promotion for our listeners. Um, you're offering a complimentary integrative uh, nurse life coaching stress reduction session. Yes. And is, is there a special code that they need to give you to know that they're coming from this show or? I guess just say, you know, Nurse Shark Academy and that'd be fine. Okay. All right. You heard it there. Use the code Nurse Shark Academy um, to, to get access to your free session. Well, I want to thank you for uh, spending your time with us today. If Is there one last little piece of advice you can give to a budding nurse entrepreneur out there, what would it be? Well, I think anyone who chooses nursing, it's a great career. And the reason it's great is because we're not stuck in one specialty. We still have the ability to try different fields and explore um, different areas of healthcare or to even step out and become our own bosses. And so it's a perfect time in nursing for nurses to just take it to another level that you and I haven't even seen yet. I certainly agree. One of the greatest things about nursing is that we're so versatile and mm -hmm. we're able to learn and do new things, do exciting things. Well, you've heard it here. I want, want to thank Susan for being an excellent guest. I want to invite you to follow the Nurse Shark Academy show and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to download our podcast from Podbean and uh, enjoy us and leave us a um, leave us a comment or a review on Apple. We thank you for uh, tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Welcome to our three day Kickstart your 2024 Nurse Biz Challenge. I'm excited to be here. We're gonna celebrate you. We're gonna plan a winning strategy for your business in 2024. And we're gonna look at growth strategies to take your business further. Don't forget to click the link and register. Thank you for listening to the Nurse Shark Academy show wherever you get your podcasts or watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll know when all of our episodes come out. If you want further information, you can contact us on the nurse shark academy.biz.